Peace, blessings, and honors to all the brothers spreading this truth, salvation to the elect. You know, so just riding around today, you know, in Esau's kingdom, you know, especially when you start getting out there to those um, expensive neighborhoods where all the Edomites at, you know, you see a lot of Starbucks and a lot of nice houses, a lot of nice cars and stuff. And it could kind of tug at your heart and you could kind of say, man, I'm a, you, you know, you're an Israelite, you know, you know, you in this truth and you'd be like, man, I'm a king of this earth, man. I want to have those things. I want to have um, the glory. Really, that's what it's about. I want to have the glory. You know, you watching movies and all these movies portraying Edomites with the glory. They're always the good guy that's the most powerful that comes to get to save everybody or you know the Israelite dude gets killed off and then the Edomite ends up being you know the badass and ends up you know um, winning everything and getting the girl and stuff like that. You know I find myself watching a lot of Netflix shows. I get through probably three episodes and something like something dumb will happen like the Israelite get killed over something dumb go out go out like a straight sucker right and then these edomites just live it up and i'll be like man i gotta turn this shit off turn this off man i couldn't find no shows to watch i had to start watching luke cage because that's the only one that portrayed the israelite in a good manner you see what i'm saying but the point is it's like you will start envying them you start envying their glory and their power and then it feels like the end is tearing you know, like, man, when is it going to come, man? We see all this hell breaking loose around the world, but these Edomites still living Monday through Friday, going to work, having fun, you know, going out kicking it. You're not a part of this world, so you're not doing those things. You know, everybody, Valentine's Day come. You see all these women on Instagram and these different social medias posting pictures in, um, in their underwear and, you know, um, in lingerie and stuff like that. And, and, you know, you like, man, you know, you start looking at some of these, especially Eve, you know, you only human. You're not lusting over them, but you like, man, you know, shorty look good, you know, and, um, I, I, I like to have a wife like that. But then you're looking at it like, man, I know I can't get one like that because, you know, you, you, you have to be wicked to get them. You have to be in the same industry as them or making music or doing wicked things. Or you, or you have to be a very rich man. And for you to become a very rich man in Esau's kingdom, you have to basically at some point in time, you're going to have to do wicked things. You see what I'm saying? So this is just really just to give brothers more hope, you know, and, and, and show brothers not to envy them because there's an end that's coming and what to look forward to. Cause you know, this world ain't got nothing on the kingdom. So you got to look at it that way. Like you always got to look at it that way. Like, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. That's a nice car. I always used to like those cars when I was back in the world, but this ain't got nothing on the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? So let's pull out a, um, some, some scriptures on that. And jump the Proverbs 23. And we're going to start at um, verse 15. My son, if thy heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yeah, my my reins shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things, right? So we out here preach, preaching this gospel, the good news, right? Let not thy heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. So in your heart, don't let, don't let that... Don't let your heart say it. Damn, I envy those sinners. Look at those cars they got. You know, look at that money. Look at that power they got. Look at that jewelry, all that gold. You know, Jake loved gold and jewelry. Look at all that gold they got off making this, you know, demonic and wicked music, committing adultery, sinning right in front of you, you know, showing the whole world to, um, to follow sin. You know, don't don't look at that and, um, and envy them, you know. Um but be in the fear of the Lord all day long. So you should be in the fear of the Lord. Like, man, look, I ain't going to envy them because I know they're going to get destroyed, man. If you do that, you could be destroyed instantly. You see what I'm saying? They selling their souls. For surely, this verse 18, for surely there is an end and thy expectation should not be cut off. So, yeah, surely there's an end and you doing this work, you preaching these words, but the sinners seem like, you know, they having the glory right now in Esau kingdom. But the Lord said there's an end and your expectation should not be cut off, meaning you you um expecting to make it to the kingdom, you know, you're hoping, you're hoping to make it to the kingdom and to have everything. I mean, that's just the best way to sum it up. 
What we gonna have in the kingdom? We gonna have it all. Everything. You can't you don't have enough imagination to imagine what we're gonna have in the kingdom. And the Lord said it ain't gonna be cut off. You do this word, you please the Lord, it ain't gonna be cut off, man. You're gonna have all those things plus more. You're gonna rejoice in the kingdom of heaven. You're gonna be happy you did the work. So, you know, that's just a little faith for for um for some brothers, you know, stay up in this truth. Continue um doing this world. Let's get some scriptures, matter of fact, on the kingdom. Let's jump to let's jump to Daniel. We're gonna um, get a couple out of Daniel. Daniel chapter two, starting at verse 44. And in the day of these kings shall God of heaven set up a kingdom which should never be destroyed, and the kingdom should not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it should stand forever so their kingdom yeah it might seem great to what we could picture today you know especially the billionaires and millionaires that's living in this world and got that immense power you know stuff like that it might seem great today but they could be killed they could die they could lose all they stuff they could be sued you know what i mean and, and the biggest thing at it all is they kingdom is gonna come to the end our kingdom is not going to ever come to an end. And we're going to take their kingdoms. And they're going to be ours. If you, if we get in the kingdom, man, if you want um, a car, if you want a Lamborghini, you can have one. Even though that's probably going to be lower level. That's probably going to be lower level. You're probably going to be looking at that stuff like, man, what is that? That's, you know, that's BS. We we in chariots. We in decked out chariots and stuff like that. You ain't going to want no car. You know what I mean? You're going to be looking at that like that's lower level. Them gonna be like bicycles for your kids when they growing up. To, 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 to learn, you see what I'm saying? The big boys, we gonna be in different jets and and chariots and things like that. Th that's what the big boys gonna play with, you know. If you want to, if you want to, but you know, our kingdom is gonna last forever. That's the difference. Listen, to, um, Daniel chapter seven, verse um twenty seven. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven should be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions should serve and obey him. So you got to think about it, right? If all dominions, everything on earth is going to serve Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, and we his people, we his saints, like it said, it should be given to the people of the saints. He gonna give it to us, so they gonna serve us. They gonna serve us. You know what I mean? You can have a car company, you can have a, a house company, and, and don't even let me get started on the houses. What we living in right now is like shacks. It's like a garage. If you got a two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar house in the kingdom, that's gonna be like one of your garages. We gonna have not mansions. We gonna have palaces. I'm talking about stuff that that's so big it take up like if it was in today's modern world it'd take up five blocks just your palace, it take up five city blocks. We gonna have palaces. Full if you wanna play basketball in the kingdom, full basketball. Man, ain't, like the Lord said, ain't you can't even imagine. There's no there, you can't even imagine what we're gonna have. You're gonna live in palaces. We're gonna be we're gonna have um cities. What's that Luke um Luke nineteen um verse. Starting at verse 17, you're going to be a king over five to ten cities, something like that. Going to have your name on it, your Hebrew name on it. These are your ten cities full with heathen that work for you, that you that you coming down in a chariot in. You see what I'm saying? So there's there's no limit to it, and we're going to have all dominion over everything. You know, Esau, he ain't really got dominion over everything. He think he do, but he still got to go at it with the, with the, with the Moabites. You know, uh, e e e Esau going against Esau with the Russians. You know, they got to go with the um, Iranians, Elon. You know, they got to um, make treaties and stuff with Hamites. You know what I mean? But we going to have complete dominion over everything. You see what I'm saying? Like Esau, like an Edomite, he'd get caught slipping. He could go into the jungle. He'd go into Africa and a lion to kill him. Uh, a wolf, a pack of wolves to hunt him down and kill him. Man, hey, we going to have dominions over the animals. An Israelite baby could be in the middle of the Congo. It ain't no animal, no snake, no venomous, nothing going to touch him. 
that's complete dominion. You see what I'm saying? So they can't even compare. This This world can't compare to the king. Yeah, sometimes it seems like the end is tearing. Yeah, sometimes you could fall into that demon of a little bit of envy, but you got to shake that off and understand, like, man, this ain't got nothing on the kingdom. I don't want none of this stuff. This this play play. This ain't got nothing on the kingdom. You gotta you gotta look at it like that. You keep that faith. This um Matthew chapter six, verse thirty three. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, you know, seek the kingdom of God. You gotta seek seek the kingdom. You gotta you gotta. Be apart from this world, you know, set aside from this world, you know, Kadash, you know, and um, you got to look at the kingdom. That's what you got to be um, seeking. You got to be like, man, I ain't seeking no Lamborghini, no Ferrari. I ain't seeking no no mansion. I ain't seeking to um, have power, you know, be able to get good lawyers, you know, be able to take vacations and stuff. I'm not seeking that, man. I'm seeking the kingdom of God. That's what I want. I want the kingdom of God. I want to have policies. I want to have multiple wives. Multiple, um, a whole bunch of children. I want to have cocky binds. You see what I'm saying? I want to, I want to have dominion over ten cities. I want to have he that slaves handmaids. You know what I mean? Servants. You know what I mean? I want to be a king. You know, and most of all, I want to serve the Lord in righteousness. You know what I mean? That's what you have to be seeking. You got to get in that mindset. You know, they call it kingdom mindset. You got to be in kingdom mindset. You see what I'm saying? You know, and the Lord said all these things should be added unto you, man. So have faith, man. Don't always, you ain't always got to sit back and like, man, I, I hope so, man. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I just, I pray, I hope. Man, have a little faith and not to be cocky about it, but you got to have faith like, man, I'm doing this work because that's going to push you to do the work more. When you really feel and believe that you can attain it, if you don't really feel and believe that you can attain it, you're going to, you're going to lack at the work. If you really feel and believe that you can attain the kingdom, that's going to push you to go even harder. You see what I'm saying? It's like if I see a a, um, a Lamborghini driving down the street, if I don't think I ever can get it, man, I ain't even going to worry about it. Like, man, yeah, it looks nice. I'm going to hate on it. Man, it looks nice, but it ain't all that because I, because in my heart, I don't feel like I could really get it. But if I know, oh, yeah, man, I'm going to get this big bonus. Oh, I might be able to get one of those. You see it then. Then you you see a Lamborghini driving down the street. You're going to go to work. You're going you gonna to be like, oh, all I got to do is do this, do that, and I can get one. Then you're going to go to work. You're going to bust your ass. Because you're going to be like, oh, it's, it's, it's an arm's reach. I can, I can reach and grab that, and I really want that. And you're going to go, and you're going to go hard at work so you can go get it and actually fulfill it. So you got to have a little faith. Don't be cocky with it, but you got to have faith because the Lord is telling you that it's going to be added into you. The Lord say all these things should be added into you. Not all these things might be added into you. Maybe they maybe be added to you. No, the Lord said all these things will be added into you. Do this work, have faith. Like, man, we're going to be in the kingdom. Go talk to the brothers. Like, brother, we're going to be in the kingdom. I'm becoming already start planning, seeking the kingdom. You got to seek the kingdom and all these things will be added into you, you know. Have faith and works. You know, let's jump to Revelation 21, of course. Um, let's start at verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Right? So that just means not actual heaven and earth, but it's talking about the kingdom. There was a new kingdom coming to earth, a new rulership of the earth, because the, the last one, Esau kingdom, that passed away. That's over with, right? And, and I, John, saw the holy city of Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bribe a door for her husband so you know that's that's the elect coming back down you know in a multitude that one third that's going to be saved you know coming back down you know because jerusalem is a people before his place right uh, and i heard a great voice of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of god is with man and he will dwell with them and they should be his people and god himself should be with them and be their god so i mean that's the glory right there more than anything physical thing that you want or that you think you can have i mean that's the glory right there we're gonna have the lord you know the creator of these things the king of kings the lord of lords gonna be with us living with us meaning you never know how it's gonna be but we only can speculate meaning you're gonna be able to go talk to the lord man you're going to be able to go thank the Lord, man. You're going to be able to get knowledge from the Lord. The whole kingdom going to be getting knowledge from the Lord. You see what I'm saying? That's the glory right there. So, you know, if the Lord is dwelling with us, you know the place got to be decked out. 
you know it gotta be the best of the best, the best that's ever been created in entire existence. If the Lord's gonna be dwelling on there with us, we're gonna have the best of everything. What are we gonna have the best of? The best of everything. Just everything. That's the best way to explain it. Everything. If the Lord's gonna be there with us, right? And God should wipe away all the tears from their eyes. You might lose family members, you might lose kids, mothers, wives, you know, going through that fire, you know, like like uh, you have to be trotted through the fire, you know, to come out as as pure gold, you know, you know, a diamond under the pressure, you know. What what they say, you know, um, you know, we're formed by pressure. You know, we're trotted through the fire, you know, and, um, we're covered by the dirt, but, you know, the Lord, the Lord polishes us so we can shine. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord going to wipe away those tears. He's going to polish us so we can shine. And there should be no more death, meaning ain't the death going to stop. Your, your family members ain't going to be dying no more. You ain't going to be in fear of dying no more. You know what I mean? Neither sorrow. You know, we ain't going to always have that dark cloud over our head. Like, even if you get a little bit of money in Esau Kingdom, you're like, man, all oh, this could be gone tomorrow. All I got to do is, you know, run and, and um, get sued, get locked up, got to fight a case, spend all my money fighting the case. Esau set traps for you to get locked up in any type of way. You know, all oh, this could be gone tomorrow. You see what I'm saying? You ain't going to have that dark cloud over your, uh, over your head no more. No, nor crying. Neither, you know, mama not going to be crying. Your wife not going to be crying because y'all can't pay bills or whatever. You know, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. You see what I'm saying? So the former things, all that stuff is going to be passed away, you know, because of the Lord. You know, he going to shine on us, which is going to um, in, in return make us shine. You know, um, let's jump to verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city and holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Remember, he shined so we could shine, you know, so we're going to have the glory of him. And her light, since we're talking about shining, was like into a stone, most precious, the most, not halfway or medium. No, the most precious. Even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. You know how we look, how much we love crystals, how beautiful crystals is. It had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. And at the 12 gates, I mean 12 angels. And the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So no, heathen are not going to enter our kingdom, but heathen will be servants in the kingdom. You say, you say well, how can heathen be servants in the kingdom? But you said they're not going to enter, they're not going to be entered be able to enter in the 12 gates because only Israelites is entering each other. Well, the, the, the point is, without twisting up my words, the point is, is kingdom is twofold. Kingdom means there's an actual kingdom. There's an actual city with gates. And kingdom also means that rulership. So yes, the heathen are going to be in our kingdom as far as when we're in rulership because the whole world is going to be under our dominion and rulership. That's what it said. The whole We're going to have dominion over the whole world and they're going to be servants. But there's going to be an actual city with gold streets and gates that the heathen won't be able to get in. Atropolis outside of this outside of this actual city and in, in the in the 10 cities you got outside of this actual city, you're going to have heathen servants. Yes, they're going to be in our kingdom. They're going to be servants. But the actual kingdom, the actual city, they're not going to be the enter because there's 12 gates and only Israelites can enter in through those 12 gates. You see what I'm saying? So like when we have a Passover or, or whatever holy days that we're going to going to um, celebrate and you, we come back to worship the Lord and the Lord is it, 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 it's within these gates. Only Israelites, you're not going to be bringing your servants in with. You're not going to bring your Edomites, your Moabites, and Hamites in to go worship the Lord. Which you know, you got to keep them outside these gates. When we go in those gates, you know, only Israelites, you see. Um, You know, having the children of Israel. And on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. They're going to be very high esteemed, very powerful men. You know, the 12 apostles of Yahweh And he that taught, and we know some of them now. They here walking the earth now, you know, um, GMS. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the walls thereof. And the city lie four square and the length is 
as large as the breadth and the measure of the city with the reed twelve thousand four longs and the length and the breadth and height it, it are equal. So you know you could go into that and actually figure out the dimensions of the city. You know, sound sound like a great big city, right? And he measured the wall there of a hundred and forty and four cubits according to the measure of a man that is of of the um angel. And the building of the wall of it was jasper. The whole wall is jasper. Precious stones. And the city was pure gold, like into clear glass. So, if you know, like a lot of the gold that we wear is gold and it's mixed with other metals. But if you actually get pure gold, it's almost like you can see through it. It's a goldish color, but it's like you can see through it. So, the streets and the city is going to be like pure gold, but almost like see-through you know what i mean it's just the most beautiful it's ever when you see actual pure gold it shines the light hit it and it shines glory of the lord right and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all matters of precious stones and the foundation and the first foundation was jasper the second sapphire the third clemony the fourth and emerald the fifth Sardox, and I know I'm messing these words up, but bear with me. And the sixth, Sardius, and the seventh, Chrysolite, and the eighth, Beryl, and the ninth, Topaz, and the tenth, uh, Chrys Chrysomus, the eleventh, uh, Jacinth, and the twelfth, and uh, Emerist. And you could go into all those different words and do your research and Google them and see what they actually look like, you know. And the twelve gates were the tw were twelve pearls. I mean, pearl, pearl. You know, you get the old woman, they get their pearls and they be very expensive and they feel like they fancy. Man, we're going to have 12 gates. The gates are going to be made out of pearl. The most precious, right? Every several gate was of one pearl. And the streets of the city were pure gold as if they were transparent glass. Yeah, that's what I mean when they say see-through is transparent. And you know, you know the Lord is the ultimate Jake. Because this is some Jake stuff right here. We the only people. Look at Esau Kingdom. You got concrete. You know what I mean? You got um, you got buildings made out of glass, you know, um, brick, you know what I mean? And different things like that. But, you know, when Jake get it, we got to throw a little bit of extra shine on it. We got, we going to have streets made out of pure gold, man. Esau, can you imagine Esau making a street out of pure gold that everybody could be on? Man, they don't do stuff like that, man. That's Jake, and that's how you know the Lord is the ultimate Jake. The Lord said, man, my city going to have streets made out of pure gold gold you see what i'm saying so and then you got to look at it right so if we're going to have streets then we're gonna, probably going to have vehicles some type of vehicles that's going to drive on those streets so i mean that's just you know just something to look into you see what i'm saying so you want lamborghinis who knows we might have stuff we gonna have stuff that's way better but we might actually have real actual vehicles they might run on different things but it said we're gonna have streets of of city that that's gonna be pure gold, or we might just be walking down. We might be running down. We might be super fast. You never know, man. You only can imagine. That's why the Lord said you you can't. This exceeds our imaginations, you know. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. So he ain't gonna have no temple in the middle of it. The Lord ain't gonna be in the middle of it. He is the temple of it. So it was showing you that you know the Lord is gonna actually be there in that city. You see what I'm saying? And, I mean, come on. He's the ultimate Jake. This is decked out. You got pearl. You got different precious stones. You got city made out of pure gold. Come on, man. The Lord finna flex on him. And, he, and like he said, he gonna give all these things to us. He's gonna give all these things to us under him. You see what I'm saying? So, you have that to look forward to. Don't envy this world. Don't envy this kingdom, you know, and seek, and, and seek the kingdom of the Lord. Seek the kingdom of the Lord, you know. With that, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shabra. Rakasai, you know, um, peace, blessings, honors to all the brothers in this truth that spread this word, you know, keep doing this work. Salvation to the elect. Have faith.